Okay, Saturday night. Um, you know, there's so much talent on this Bengals offense. I, I just don't get it. You know, that was great receivers. You got three number ones. You know, Johnson, Hoosh, and Chris Henry. I'd take them as the number one on my team mm, any day of the week. Uh, I don't understand why it's so hard when you have that kind of a passing attack to move the ball and put up points. And I know nothing's as simple as it sounds on paper, but come on. you got to be able to at least put up some points, but I just see a lot of incompetence on this offense. And, you know, it's so many things right now. And I, I'm, I'm wondering if it's Marvin Lewis to blame because it it kind of it really does suck to see all the talent on this offense go to waste. They can't put up points, you know. But you know, when you think of who to blame for this game, you probably might have thought of their defense before their offense. But still, and um, Niners, um, you know, they're making a couple of people up in uh, New England groan a little bit with these wins to wrap up the season that they probably shouldn't be winning. They're um, having a bit of a rejuvenation on offense, and it really says a lot about Alex Smith that Sean Hill, this third-string career guy who comes in on his first career start and plays better than Alex Smith has at any point this season. And, you know, of course he had help. Frank Gore played well. Vernon Davis made a couple plays. The receivers were getting open and making catches. But I think it says a lot about number one overall pick Alex Smith that his third stringer could come in and play better than him. Yeah, you, you know what I'm getting at. Um, you know, obviously, especially at this point now, this game is meaningless, so... At this point, it's pretty much meaningless beyond stats and stuff, so... Uh, there you go. Let's see here. Uh, Patriots 20, Jets 10. You know, just what you might expect. You might have expected more points, but... You know, snow bad weather, uh, you can't just throw up bombs all day in that kind of weather, and I do think that's going to become a problem for them um, in the playoffs. I definitely see it snowing in Gillette Stadium, and they're going to have to take on, like, Jacksonville, and that's going to be a problem. I, I'm really starting... My prediction that Jacksonville will beat New England in the playoffs is looking pretty good right now. Jacksonville has proved that they can play dominantly in the snow, I'm not sure if New England can. Um, you know, obviously with the bad weather, <clears throat> a couple of wacky plays, there are a couple of blocked punts, um, a defensive touchdown, a special team touchdown, and the Jets made it a game. I think that if they had taken more chances near the end and uh, just played a bit more efficiently and, uh, you know, just gotten a couple of things to go their way, they could have uh, put together a win. You know, they were close. They were close. So, uh, you know, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, so ultimately it's pretty meaningless. But you, now you wonder, is Tom Brady going to get his record? Um, maybe he doesn't care. He shouldn't care. But is he going to do it? Because uh, he needs five touchdowns in two games now, and a month ago it looked like a foregone conclusion, but, you know, what the hell's happened since? So uh, he's got two games left, and I'll be keeping an eye on that because we might be witnessing history, and we might just be witnessing another great season. Uh, Titans-Chiefs, I was just wholly uninterested by this game, but the Titans did come through. I did pick Tennessee. I did okay in picks this week, 10-6, and six, but I didn't feel too strongly either way. Yep, Vince had one of the best days of his career in terms of being a pure passer, Roy Dell Williams, the rookie that they're depending on, made some good plays. And, you know, the Chiefs were able to keep up with them step for step for most of the game, and I do applaud that. Brody Croyle um, turned the ball over a couple times, but he made a couple of plays. And, you know, it was just a pretty good game here, I suppose. And Tennessee stays alive with that win. I don't think they're going to do it for obvious reasons. I think they blew it last week. But um, they stay alive. Uh, Jacksonville 29, Steelers 22, and I continue to say it, I love what this Jacksonville team does. They run it like no few other teams in the NFL. They um, can play in the bad weather. They pass the ball efficiently. Garrard continues to have a really good season. 
Um, today was one, uh, Sunday was one of his more high-powered outputs of the season. Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones-Drew combining up for a real nice running back tandem. And, you know, Fred Taylor's just got to be the best player in NFL history to not make a Pro Bowl in his career, you know? And Pittsburgh, you know, this does leave some doubts because this was their game. It was at home. It was in the bad weather. They're, they're, they're used to dominating these kind of games, but they got run over. And it is concerning, and, you know, a lot of people are talking about how Cleveland's going to catch him in the divisional race, and, you know, I think to myself, you know, that's not going to happen, but that's just another way that I'm saying that this team's in trouble because they can't play their kind of football right now. And if in the playoffs they have to play the Jaguars again, it doesn't look good because Pittsburgh was very lucky to be in this game. They mounted a couple of drives at the end to tie it up and got some miracle big plays on third down, and they had things going their way at the end and still couldn't pull it out. So it's not looking good for them if they fall to that fourth seed, and that looks like that's going to happen. And uh, Bill, uh, Browns 8, Bills 0. Uh, weird game, just no points for the most part. A lot of snow, which, you know, if you look at what Jamal Lewis was able to do, and even Marshawn Lynch, they were able to run wild in the snow, which um, is very impressive on their part, especially Jamal Lewis, who had a monster game. And uh, the Browns kicker, what's his name? I can't remember the name of the Browns kicker, but he hit this long field goal in that snowstorm, and i got to give him credit for that, because that can't be easy. Buffalo played too conservative all game and only opened it up near the end when it was pretty much too late. And now they're out of the playoffs, and Cleveland is just about in now, I think. So it'll be interesting to see what they do in the playoffs because if they can just squeeze a little bit out of that defense of theirs, which isn't that good, they could upset somebody. I look forward to seeing Chargers and Brown the Chargers and Browns go at it.